The Los Angeles Clippers got some much-needed firepower back in their lineup on Monday night. Kawhi Leonard returns after missing six games with an ankle injury. How about Paul George making his way back in that Clippers lineup after missing seven games due to a hamstring injury? Clippers in Charlotte taking on the Hornets, and that dynamic duo got to work early. Both George and Kawhi getting to their spots and showing you why they are two of the deadliest scorers we got in the league when healthy. Other end we go. How about P.J. Washington knocking in the three? He had 26 points. Kelly Oubre also had himself a game. Two of his 28 points. Clippers make a run. John Wall, by the way, back in that lineup. Everybody was missing time when Kawhi went down. Terrence Mann is going to put back this George miss in a major way, just dunking all over Nicholas Richards' head. That surely doesn't feel great. And then George knocks down the three. He had 13 points in the first half. Clippers up as we enter the locker room. In the third, Oubre cleaning up the mess. I got to clean up what I messed up. And then Scary Hours makes an appearance in the third. Rozier with a little ah, ah. And then Rozier knocking in the three as the Hornets go on a run to take the four-point lead midway through the third. Richards like, you dunk on me, I get my get back. I'm going to get it back in blood. We got a tight one as we go into the fourth quarter. It's Luke Kennard off the dish from Wall, who had 12 points and 12 assists. And then it's Kawhi reversing at the rim. Clippers up by five. Hornets not done just yet. It's Oubre cutting the Hornets deficit down to one. We're tied at 115. 92 seconds to go. It's scary hours in the fourth. Terry giving the Hornets a two-point lead. Clippers need some plays. Their dynamic duo makes them. It's George saving the rock, getting it to Kawhi for the game time deuce. And then with 1.4 seconds to go, it's Kawhi with the go-ahead jump shot to give the Clippers the two-point lead. Last chance for the Hornets. Washington gets off a look. It is not a good one. And the Clippers get a major road win with their big two back in the lineup, 119-117. I call this a major road win because the Clippers were healthy and they played together, which is a rarity over the last couple years. Clippers big man Ivaka Zubek recently spoke out about the Clippers injury situation. He said, it's very exhausting. We've been playing so many games. It's hard when you got less bodies. It's hard, but guys have injuries everywhere. Some teams just get more unlucky. We got to hold up until they come back, which, again, now they are back. But I guess if you're a Clippers fan out there, the question is how long will they remain back? It is great to see Kawhi Leonard back in that Clippers lineup. But I got to be honest with you guys. Something seems a little fishy about this L.A. Clippers team. All right, I just believe Kawhi Leonard can't get right. I don't believe his body is allowing him to be the player that he once was on a night-to-night -night basis in the NBA. Let's put Kawhi in one box, okay? I'm looking at something here. Paul George, who was dealing with a hamstring injury, also made his return against that Charlotte Hornets team. You mean to tell me that it just magically aligned after George missed seven games, Kawhi missed six. For PG to return the same game that Kawhi came back. And not to mention John Wall, who is undoubtedly the third most popular player on the Clippers squad. A former star in this league who probably still looks at himself as a star caliber guy in this league. John Wall also returned in said game, as the Clippers were able to beat the Hornets by two thanks to some Kawhi magic. Look, I am thankful to have Kawhi Leonard back on the court. The game of basketball is better when one of the game's best talents is playing. But I got to be honest with you guys, something feels real fishy about this Clippers team. It feels like this team only wants to play when they're at full strength nowadays, and when they're not, it's either all or nothing. If you are a fan of the NBA, you shouldn't be rooting for this team. 
I'm serious. You should not be rooting for this team. If the Clippers are able to get hot at some point this season, win a lot of games, let's say after they win a, a good 10 out of 12, 20 out of 25, then they sit and rest their guys towards the latter part of the regular season again. And then they're ready in the postseason, and they go on a spectacular postseason run led by Kawhi PG, and he, let's even throw John Wall in the mix. It's not good for the league because we're once again devaluing the regular season to levels that we've never seen. Kawhi and PG just don't load manage for a game. They load manage for five, six, seven bundles of games at a time. It's not good for the league if Kawhi, Paul George, and the Clippers have success because, to me, they ain't doing it the right way. Assuming they keep up what they're doing right now, play a couple games, lose a few, sit out, whatever the case may be. If they play a couple games and sit out for the remainder of the season, I can't respect this championship the way that I would respect it if Giannis and the Bucks win it, if LeBron and the Lakers win it, if Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets win it, if whomever wins the championship this year. It's about the story oftentimes. And if Kawhi and Paul George are not playing night-to-night regular season games, fans don't get to develop a story with the players. There's no regular season games to align yourself with. They're not playing enough. You don't get any rhythm. They're never playing on TV games. They're always out due to injury. There is no rhythm with fans. You can't develop storylines. You know, regular season games when the Clippers are taking on the Bucks or the Clippers are taking on the Lakers. You can't develop rhythm storylines with the Clippers and the Warriors, the Clippers and the Grizzlies, because their top guys are not out. When top guys are out, I don't care who's playing on the other side. Fans turn off their attention span. So to me as a fan, I got to see Kawhi and Paul George play for me to celebrate the greatness that is these brothers. They are phenomenal talents. But I can't root for that right now because that's setting a bad tone in the NBA. If they're able to win, because the Clippers can get wins in the regular season without Kawhi and Paul George and stay around that six or seven seed out West this year, I believe, without Kawhi and PG playing regularly uh, for that team. If the Clippers are able to get to the postseason in a seed that they feel comfortable with making a run, it sets a bad precedent if Kawhi and Paul George just kind of pick up and play whenever they want. Fans pay entirely too much money to go to these games. You know, watching these teams on television, other stars around the league deserve better than this. Hell, guys like Steph can't take a night off if he's taking on a Clippers team because he feels like the Clippers ain't going to never put their guys out there. This is supposed to be a partnership between players that make the money that Kawhi and Paul George make alongside Steve Barnumer, the owner of the Clippers team, and obviously Adam Silver in the NBA. Kawhi and PG ain't holding up their end of the deal right now. 